Welcome once again to Notebook Theater. I am your host, Lambdog76. <clears throat> Good friend of the channel has been bugging me about doing a, a video about derivatives. They're kind of hot and heavy in the news right now. Um, I'd imagine if, if my friend has talked about them, then Alex Jones must have talked about them. Bless his heart. And... Um, there was a Rocket 138, that's with a 3 for the E, come on dog, come on, uh, posted a video with a definition from, um, I don't know what, what the source was about the derivatives, but in that, deriv in that derivative discourse, the, uh, the host referred to um, open market derivatives, such as the Qs, uh, the VIGs. Things like that. I mean, these are these are actual traded indexes, and the benchmark of these derivatives, in the case of the Qs and VIX, uh, has to do with either a a basket of the value of a number of stocks all put together, or or something in the the actual price action. Like volatility is how much the prices move of a given basket of stocks in a single day. Now I know that. Oh man. As I say that, I realize how complex that sounds. Um, let me tell you, give you an example of uh, the ES, which is the S and P's future. Now these are uh, these are derivatives, okay? Make no mistake about it. But these are not the same derivatives that a company like Bank of America shows as having several, many, many, many billion dollars worth. Okay, ES is a futures index of the S&P 500, which is the Standard & Poor's assembly of 500 various stocks, which go all go into a basket, and you add them together, and you end up with a value of that total basket of, I don't know, let's say it's $1,300, okay? So a single, a single share of the S&P 500 basket would be $1,300. Now, we're not actually buying this basket, but you and I agree and reserve the right to purchase at that particular point at some point in the future. So we have agreed on the value of this derivative. We're not actually trading 500 stocks for $1,300, okay? We are trading in on a contractual option. And you're putting your money down, I'm putting my money down, and we agree on it. It's consensual, and it is a it is a move that will allow us to, if you are betting for some reason, the stock that you deal with normally operates in a trend where it increases in value based on the, the decrease in value of the S&P 500, taking part in this transaction could work for you and that would actually be called a hedge <clears throat> if that doesn't make sense I'll, I'll talk about that again at a later time I'm, I'm more than happy to what I want to do though is get on with these derivatives that um, dr. Ron Paul points out that there's not enough GDP gross domestic product meaning there's not enough production and selling ability in the entire world four times over to cover what these uh, derivatives obligate to. Let me try to explain that. There are two mortgage companies here. On the one side this is the balance sheet. On the one side, you have assets, and on the other side is liabilities. Okay, same for this. This company's name is Lambdog76 Incorporated. And this company's name is Rocket One Thirty Eight. 
138 Incorporated. It's important for us to be incorporated, Rocket and myself, because that allows our company to have all the benefits of the individual, yet none of the liabilities of being an individual. <laughs> anyway, back to assets and liabilities. Assets are things such as cash on hand, um, mortgage, interest, interest on mortgage payments due, and things of that nature. A liability would be the money that you actually put out in mortgages. So, for example, Rocket 138 is not into the business at all yet. However, I have, um, on the liability side, I have several mortgages out, okay? Um, let's say I have $100 million in mortgages out. This represents $100 million in mortgages. Of those $100 million, in term, I receive an interest payment of those mortgages. So this $100 million that's out, uh, Let's say it is, uh, just keep it round, let's say it's at 5%. There's 5% interest on this $100 million that goes towards my assets. And that is per year. So stretch that out over 30 years and you kind of have, have an idea of what that's worth. Now I don't, $100 million in liabilities the amount of assets that you need to have on hand to balance that out, you know, how how do you end up with $100 million worth of assets? Well, in order to balance your assets, the amount of money that you need to take in needs to equal these liability problems as you're going along. Now, if this liability issue were to become a problem, then I am going to need to package some of these liabilities with their assets and sell them off. And what we're going to call that is a mortgage-backed security. And Lambdog76 Incorporated is now packaging mortgage-backed securities. They are, they are packaged in such a fashion that I have assembled my most reliable customers, that is the people who make their house payments every single month, okay? And they are reliable, they have a very good credit rating, and as a result, these mortgage-backed securities that I'm selling are AAA rated. And what the mortgage-backed security does, though, you take on some of this $100 million, and in return, you also get this percentage of payment, almost like a bond. So, Rocket purchases $50 million of these mortgage-backed securities. Now, please remember... Where is the value of these mortgage-backed securities coming from? Okay, you do have some value in the property, but the main value of these mortgage-backed securities is this percentage of interest. And Rocket wants to get down on some of that interest. Okay, and the work's been done for them. It's all been packaged up. This is AAA. This should be money in the bank. Everybody with me so far? <clears throat> Now he has this fifty million dollars, and um, these securities are packaged because they're a triple A rating. They don't have necessarily that five percent. It's going to be a bit lower because the lower the risk, the lower your payback. Because what what is the uh, what's the incentive to loan the money unless the payback is good, and 
what is it that makes interest valuable, but in, it is the risk itself. So he has the $50 million. Now, he now owns as a liability $50 million of the mortgage-backed security. I've cut my liabilities down by half. I've kept some of the more volatile ones, so I've actually increased my average interest percentage. So this actually isn't as far as it used to be. So my assets have now overcome my liabilities and I'm running a good sound business. Rocket, he's got $50 million in mortgage-backed securities. His asset is at 3%. Now what, let's just assume by the way the payments are made and by the way that they're payable, it leaves him with a favorable return as well. And he also has a profitable business. This is a lot of money now. There's $100 million floating around. $100 million of, of value. I have $50 million. Rocket has $50 million. What is it that makes this value $50 million? Notice it's on the liability side. And why is it a liability? Because this money has been spent. Um, it can't, it can't just return. Like we couldn't, we couldn't turn these houses back over and get dollar for dollar guaranteed. It doesn't work quite like that. So we have $100 million out there flapping in the breeze, assuming that the returns will, will make it. Now, here's what happened. This AAA rating was fraudulent. Was it Lamb Dog's fault? Um, was it Rocket's fault? Uh, it's kind of irrelevant in a way because I am the seller and I sold these as AAA rated, then in effect, um, I should be able to have to um, cover the, you know, I should be held liable for for that that particular rating. However, we just ha started to get massive defaults on these mortgages, and as each as each house defaults, okay, I start seeing them first because I am left with the higher risk ones. The liabilities are staying the same, okay? Remember, liabilities staying the same, but as each house defaults, my asset level decreases. And it decreases. Okay? Until I am left with a far from balance sheet. I don't only do, um, mortgages aren't the only business that Lambdog76 Incorporated covers. I'm also a bank. <laughs> And as a bank, I'm required to keep at least 10% of uh, my fractional assets to liabilities on hand um, as far as uh, keeping people deposit their money. I'm required to keep that much on hand. And I, I ended up having to put people's savings accounts and insurance accounts and everything. All my liabilities are one. And as my assets decrease, so in becomes the risk. And now we actually have a a money crisis on our hands, and um, because it's such an emergency, this money needs to be made available through um, FDIC and some other programs in order to influx my assets. So there you go. Those are the derivatives we're talking about. 15 minutes later, um, if you if you made it through this, I, I appreciate it. Um, 
I think I could probably do it a little bit simpler. I, I took up a lot of time talking about these other derivatives, um, but we can get into it more later if, uh, if anybody's interesting, but this crap is kind of boring as hell. And um, it is important, though. So, all right, y'all take care.